It's not cutting the roof of my mouth. It's not good Dutch crunch. <laughs> it's not Dutch and it's not crunch. <laughs> it's yeah, that's just soft bread with like little creases in it. Give me the crunch. I want the Russian Dutch crunch. <laughs> yeah, the, the Serbian Dutch crunch. The, cr- the crunch Dutches you. Yeah. <laughs> glass into your dungeon <laughs> crunch. <laughs>
and like who cares? Yeah, you can win your who conference. Who cares unless you don't win your conference and you don't get an at large bid? That yep. that would be well. That's the risk. A bummer. And I think I was looking at this earlier. I did an Instagram on this, but the most interesting matchup in this top ten grouping: UCLA, UC Irvine. Yeah. Because Irvine just beat BYU at BYU twice. Yeah, Irvine's had a strong, a yeah, strong start too. They lost I mean, the they, first match. Ignore, of the ignore Mason again. Dark horse for right. Diva. Sure. Dark horse. Yep. Yeah. But like they, they were, they had Nolan Flexen on the outside, middle, and the right side. Like same thing, trying to figure out all right what lineup works here. But they've been grooving since then, and two wins at BYU is huge. Now they're coming up against UCLA. They play tomorrow, Wednesday, against UCLA, and then they play UCLA again at UCLA. So a home and away this week. UCLA is coming off of two losses. Irvine's kind of showing showing some promise here. So that's going to be super interesting because if UCLA loses to Irvine, now all of a sudden it's no longer like, hey, the at large is like a guarantee. Yeah. You now are you now are in the situation where conference is a must. Yeah. Right? So it gets it gets interesting there. The same thing for Irvine, Big West MPSF in comparison, that whoever wins that, that's going to be you know, two teams that theoretically at the end should be close to the top, but they're going to be, you know, vying for the at-large for either conference based upon those those records right there. Yeah, I mean, again, this isn't a power ranking, right? Yeah. So, like, in watching some Irvine, I think probably have the two best lefts in the country right now. Really? Right? You're going Nolan, Nolan Flexen as top two? Best. Just how those guys have played so far. Yeah, with Heno. I mean, you have elite serving. You have guys that have been in big moments before. Um, you know, if UCLA can put their big boy pants on and, like, it goes back to Champlain and Knight, sure. Uh, but Rama, right, to his credit, has, I mean, the knock on him is maybe he's not always, you know, a super strong passer. He's passed really well when he's been in there so far. So that'll be interesting. But, I mean, I think, like, Irvine, right, should probably be in that top five conversation for the, for the end of the year. And But I think we'll know. I mean... UCLA is gonna again have to kind of rally here, and I'm sure that they can because they got a lot of experience. But yeah, Irvine's also probably got something to prove. So. Totally. Yeah, they got. I mean, Brett Sheward stepping in to yeah. run the offense for them. That's actually been super interesting. Great beard. Great. So probably the top beard of players. Yeah, gotta think top beard of players. I gotta think. The is there anyone that rivals that beard? Uh, it's bushy. It's there's a lot of volume. Easy producer, come on, guy. Bushy is the right adjective. Okay, Bob. For it. Have Chill, you have Bob. you seen? <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll get pull up, pull up a photo at some it. point. Let's go ahead. Wait, let's go I'm ahead and give it to him. Let's talk. Yeah, I'm gonna see a sure. photo of this beard. You know, actually, you What's know, actually has a decent beard sure. too. Dan Friend, UCLA kid, Edo David. Yeah, that's what I was gonna Edo say. Edo David Edo actually has yeah. a, a decent beard. I'd say Sheward's is just more. To be clear, is it David or is it David? We got to figure. You're probably right. I think it's David. Go from. The highest levels of serve received yep. to the highest levels of running the offense and just casually dropping that on us. That's it's pretty uh it's pretty badass. It's like flipping from like Gage to Joe Worsley. Like just like, oh hey, no big deal. Same yeah. player, just flip it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not unimpressive. No easy buckets pull. So no easy buckets. Is it clickbait pull pull? I don't know if it's clickbait. You think it's clickbait? Let's see. We got. You know, I'll give you the rundown. I actually, I really love that he like explained why yeah, he, he explains why. It's I, I appreciated that. that. Yeah. Plus then. one, Dustin. Yeah. I Shout out to Dustin. That was a good move. Well. We got Long Beach State in the one. That's that. I'm just gonna say right now, Dustin. That's Homer bias. No matter what you say, I don't care if they're undefeated. As an alum, picking Long Beach State. They've been playing well, but we'll, It'd be like we'll if see. We talked about we'll Stanford see. and Beta Bay all the time on Stanford this at two decent pick. <laughs> 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 Not biased at all. <laughs> not biased at all. Love, Love that. I wouldn't call it clickbait. I would just say it's more yeah, it's like, it's right. just like the immediate results based. Yeah, sure. look, I mean, UCLA is pretty low in that, just considering yeah. they lost Gooch and then, but like, won the Natty last year. Right, but they uh, lose to Santa yeah, Barbara UCLA and they is... lose to Ohio State. Yeah, yeah, a little. So he bumps them behind Ohio State. The, the championship hangover, sure. I'll, right, give, you, I'll give you that. Because Penn State put, loses to Stanford. I would Stanford. UCLA at four or five if I was being realistic and I had like a little bit of power ranking yeah I mean like it. like UCLA swept Penn State Penn State he's got Penn State at the five UCLA at the seven but Ohio so State where was, beat UCLA where was Ohio State Penn State five. should not be at the five yeah I can't I can't put Penn State that high I can't put Ohio State that high yeah um yeah, no I, I love I love Penn State beating Ohio State back Hawaii to back it's great here. 
Yeah, I, I I looked at a couple of those comments. Of course, anybody who oh, likes anybody wise who just, comments hey, they're not one, yeah. then death to death. this. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you don't like Yerme Boss? <laughs> You're dead. To Is me. he too bold for you? No, it's a great middle. Stop it. He actually has a decent beard too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. All right, let's see. It's Dustin, no Brett, but yeah, you know. Dustin's Dustin's reasoning for UCLA at seven shock of the week as they dropped to the rebuilding UCSB at home. All right, so drop them behind. Then Penn State, obviously, beating Ohio State twice, so move them ahead of that. Okay, I can understand those. Yeah, early on, UCLA probably deserving to be higher I like after the comment sweeping section. Penn State. The comment section of this is actually really interesting. Yeah, what's your favorite comment? Uh, everyone who votes in the ABCA poll should have to do a write-up like this. Yes. Fair. 100%. Yeah. Like, that's a Sold. great... That's a great point. Like, or, yeah. or like just you. publish who votes for what. Yeah, and then totally. we will talk about it and yeah. we will give you flack when yeah. you make silly voting decisions Agreed. or you are lazy. Just put your name on it, man. Yeah. Let's just, yeah, let's put our name. Let's put our names on it. Sign your work. Producer Joe. What? Yeah. Has the coaches signed their names on And off? no other sport has Grand Canyon in the top two. So we're going to just let men's volleyball. Do you have a problem with the grittiest team in the nation? No, I love it. Like it's great. So like all bets are off because we got. Do you Green feel Canyon like the they've been two. slighted? <laughs> 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 How are we supposed to get so our bad. sponsorship from the energy drink that Matt Worley always talks yeah, about? Yeah, we want a Celsius sponsorship. Celsius, thank you. We need a Celsius sponsorship. I want an, I want an Arctic vibe. I want an Frank Arctic Canyon. vibe sponsorship. I actually have. I drink a I actually Celsius that every today. morning. Matt Worley, you'll be proud of me. I had a Celsius Arctic vibe today before Stanford practice. So good. And I was juiced. juiced. Yeah. Uh, Best coaching I've probably ever done. I, Top tier. I drink a Celsius about 30 minutes before I work out every day, and it's great. It's a Arctic vibe. There you go. You heard it here first. It's great. Sponsor us, Celsius. Yeah. How does Worley have a have – a, he doesn't. He knows a guy. No, he, he does. Yeah, he, that created Celsius he or something. About it. Does he? He knows the guy that created Celsius. Maybe. I'm sure Celsius didn't go to Matt Worley and was like, hey, you and Matt all Worley's, of your followers. Matt Worley is a handsome guy. Okay, stop they it. They want a face? Stop it, Worley. <laughs> I'm, I'm on team Worley. So you're saying there's like... Celsius ambassador. There's a chance that maybe he's not an ambassador. Maybe he's just doing it for just fun. Maybe he's buying... Here's our hot take of the week. hot take of the week is Matt Worley Matt really buying fake his own Celsius Celsius. ambassador. He's not actually a Celsius ambassador. He's buying his own Celsius. He buys them at retail. <laughs> but damn, are Matt they gritty. Matt Worley goes to Costco <laughs> and buys Celsius. But Jackson Hickman is still a dog. Yeah, I so agree. all is fun at Grand Canyon. All right, we've got anything else on this poll? I think we've, I think we've hit it. Well, how about Santa Barbara at 10, though? You think that's just Dustin being like... Shout out to shout out to the Chos for getting the win. Big okay, win. just to let you know, the off the block uh, media poll came out as well and has Long Beach is one, Stanford two, Hawaii three, Grand Canyon four, UCLA five. This is more of my ranking here. Okay. Um, Penn State six, Ohio State seven, UCI eight. UCI probably is the lowest yeah. of it, Too but low. honestly, it's not horrible. BYU nine, Pep ten. Okay, sure. Yeah. I actually like that, yeah, that one, one probably as a mix of the two yes. the best. I would I would agree. And I would, that is the media poll. Yeah. Which Irvine Irvine higher, Hawaii probably like I'd swap Hawaii to the four just with their with I don't mind that as much. I think that there's some disparity between yeah. the those two. I don't have Hawaii in the top five until they really start getting rolling. Yeah. Like and traveling. First test for them, Stanford. Stanford in two weeks. That's gonna be the first test. I don't Guys, think that, we should we should go. Should we? Should we go? Should we go? Let's go to Hawaii. Producer, you want to come? Go pod. We're gonna book flights. You wanna go? Do it. All right, we got next up this week. Ariel kind of had a little little moment on social media this week. Moment? We t- calling it fifteen minutes? No, not. A, I mean, you've been you've been rising up on the Instagram, but you had a video that went viral, like truly viral. How many? Mil- what does truly viral mean? Like over a million views. Three million views. Yeah, so three three million views. That would qualify. Three point something. on a video. I think we'll allow it. Yeah. The people love referee arguments. The people do love. People love referee arguments. Okay, something very important for the rest of this game. He's going to do something awful. 
it's probably going to happen. He is, there is a screw loose up there, for sure. Let me do my job. Let me battle for you guys. Keep, even if he does something, go and then reset and make sure you go and figure out the next point. You guys understand me? Let me do my job here. Got it? Let's go. Keep fighting. Keep battling here. Let's go. Just got to get him ready for this this guy to blow it here. The ref said to tell your guys to get off the corridor or else they're going to call them. If, it, if they do it one more time. You need to chill. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I will tell them. I will tell them. It's okay. I'm I'm going to lose my mind on him. This is going to be a very long game. This guy's doing everything he can right here. Everything he can. everybody the referee had already done like seven things that were bad so it wasn't like I made this up out of thin air that the guy was just gonna like completely ruin the game for everybody but I was just getting them prepared for this guy's definitely gonna do something this video Thanks. so it has millions of views and it certainly was polarizing I think based on the comments I think that's the real interesting part of all of this is like there are a lot of people who love you and there are a lot of people who just wanted to talk some smack in the comments some keyboard warriors uh yeah can you give us your favorite comments um <laughs> my there the comments that kept like coming up was uh i didn't realize sandra bullock coached basketball that was that was some like good uh lots of sandra bullock why, 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 why? um <laughs> lots of comments about how i looked homeless um as Bill Belichick, watching. I believe, was Some Bill Belichick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's not actually high praise. Though. We thought that was high praise. Yeah, yeah. they thought they thought Bill they were Belichick. doing something with that insult, but that's actually like, thank you. I was like, yeah. yeah. Can we link that like that yeah. that Nick Cage like SNL like or, uh, Liam Neeson like? Oh, that's high praise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's high praise. <laughs> A lot of people saying that they love my coaching style. A lot of like swipe up to shops. A lot of. Uh, can I get a link to your outfit? And then it would be like a comment of like coach of the year and then coach full of herself. Coach, like it was just like. It was so polarizing. Very polarizing. For every good comment, there was an equally opposite bad comment in the other direction. Very 50-50 on everything. I love, I love what you're wearing. You hate, look homeless. Yeah, I hate what you're wearing. You're my favorite coach in the world. Why are women coaching boys? Yeah, like just yeah, yeah. the most insane stuff on there. Can yeah. we start linking to like. The New England Patriots, like, sleeveless, cut-off I mean, hoodie maybe. kind of thing. Yeah, I'm I, just like, yeah, if you want this gear, this is where Bill gets it. I'll put <laughs> no a uh, link to know, or like to, like know, it to know, and, know it. Like to know it in yeah. my uh, bio. Um, yeah. And then I've posted a bunch of, like, rebuttal things and started to, like, I don't know. They've, I mean, they've given you some ammo, for sure, to be able to respond to. Yeah. But... I think that the stuff that I'm posting is, um, it makes, like, I know that what I'm doing is, like, my team loves me and my, like, club knows what I'm about. And so uh, I am, I know that what I'm doing is the right way that I want to go about it. So I don't really care. Do you think you could do what you're doing at a college? that setting of like depends do you have the support and like do you have people that are like okay with you like going after other people i think that there are some like okay that would be that would almost be like saying like can wendy's twitter do like do what they do sure like it's yeah. a huge corporation um like that they just like go after people and it's hilarious and they have a huge following because of it and so um, I think in 2024, absolutely. Like, you can be anywhere. You can be the president of the United States and you can go after people. And, like, it, it really doesn't matter. Are, like, you the, are you the Wendy's of club volleyball coaches? I, I would love to be the Wendy's of club volleyball coaches. Like, that would be totally fine with me. That's high praise, too. Yeah. yeah it is. <laughs> it's a sacred account. Bill Belichick and Wendy's all in one. Yeah, I'm taking from that's one a, That's an automatic follow for yeah. me, for sure. But I definitely am starting to become this, like, uh, 
women's power rights thing like on Instagram and well yeah you got TikTok. a lot you got a lot of men who are hating on you and and, and it makes what I was gonna say earlier was like the like girls follow me who are like they feel so strongly about the way that I'm treated and the people that love me feel very strongly about the way that I'm treated and so it is also good for for that idea of like people feel defensive my team obviously feels defensive of like people talking shit to me and like it's a I think it's good to put yourself out there when you know what you're doing is right even if there are people that think that it's wrong have there been any like DMs or things like non public comments that you've gotten that have been like cool to read or a cool story? Oh, both. I think that both. Like they've, I've gotten DMs that are awful and I've gotten DMs that are great. Like I get the weird, like super weird stuff, and I get stuff that's like, uh, you've. I got out of volleyball years and years ago, and you have, like, shown me that it's cool to like go and do what you're doing. It's given me a lot of confidence to. I've gotten tons of stuff like that. I've also gotten a bunch of stuff that is like, I knew somebody in your family who, like your dad inspired me to this and that. Like I've gotten a bunch of that kind of stuff too. So it's kind of, um, it's cool to put myself out there because I get a lot of interesting things back. Obviously there's the, the straight up just sexist piece. Yeah. Right. I'm like, I don't get anybody commenting about how I look or yeah. or what you're wearing or, or anything about wait he should be coaching young boys yeah. like what is this when you <laughs> say what when is you this say young boys like that's a little weird yeah yeah, yeah right <laughs> no, but like I get it. but like no one's no nobody one's, ever says that no yeah. one's gonna have any problem with that right yeah. and nobody has any problem when it's men coaching you know a, a girls club team or anything, yeah right obviously totally. yeah, this is a pure sexism play um, I think it's so funny I don't know why I get such a kick out of it. Like I don't ever, I don't ever really like take actual offense to it. I think it's hilarious because I like the fact that some people actually think that it's ridiculous to me is so funny. You've been hearing it for years, though. This has been my world for eleven years now. Now it's just on social media. Now I'm just putting it out there. Like this has actually been the referees coming up to me or coming up to whoever whatever kid is my assistant or whatever, or whatever guy is sitting on my bench, sometimes my players and being like, here's the lineup talking to him about how like the head coach. And I'm like, I'm the head coach. Like that happens to me all the time. Like, Whether you like it or not, you now have a place in this realm of women in a male sport. Yeah. And that you are a voice for an entire gender. Yeah. That's where the, like, can you do this in a college or can you do this Correct, in yeah. in a different, like, when you have a boss, like, uh, we are the bosses, like, we can do whatever we want, whenever we want to. So, like, I have free reign to do whatever I want. Um, I, I think that it is important for people to do stuff like this and fully commit to just showing who they are. Like, this isn't anything super strategic on my part this is everybody who knows me sees this and is like this is who you've been for 11 years this is just a complete and total representation of what you've been doing at these tournaments for years and years and years and years and so for me to put that out there people res it resonates with people and it helps girls who are coaching boys volleyball or even boys sports in general i have a friend who's the who's a female in the Ravens locker room and she's she's coaching with the Ravens right now like there it's resonating with people who are women who are in a male dominated world um, and if I don't put this stuff out there I feel like I'm doing the wrong thing now because I think that everything that I'm doing is something that people it's like starting to really resonate with like what my brand is or just who you are, yeah. Yeah, it just, yeah. Because I've, I mean, I've, I've had people ask me, like, is that how you really are? Literally, like, people are like, is that how she actually is? And I'm like, one thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. Like that is how you have been. From the moment I have met you. Yeah, it's funny because I like I'll go to my Pilates class now, and like my Pilates instructor follows me, and like women in the class follow me, and they're like, they look at me in such a 
different way now. And I'm like, this is always yeah. how, like, the, I've I've been like this the entire time. No, I'm not coaching when I'm walking into here. Exactly. People it ask the question of, like, is that who you really are? And I think I, I've always responded with, like, the best part of what it is that you do is that you are unapologetically Ariel. Yeah. Like, you are, you have, you are, will throw the middle finger and yeah. you will give a hug and you yep. will love your team and fight for your team, but it is always genuine. Yeah. And I think that com- I think that's probably why the reason why some of these things have just kind of popped off is because yeah. it's so genuine and people can see that and you can kind of feel and resonate. But it's also why so many people get triggered by it, it is because they're like, it. I don't like this girl. Yeah being so confident in herself or, or speaking yeah. to boys, or, you know, telling boys how to do it or winning or succeeding, like, for okay. sure. Okay, so there are some of the crazy people. Like, yeah, there's a lot of the crazy. There's also some people, what I've found really interesting with the comments is, like, there's a lot of people who are um, telling me that's not the right way to raise kids. Mm-hmm. And that's not the right, like, you have to teach them to respect officials and you have to teach them to like the every like that to me is so confusing because those people I think actually mean well yeah. like I really do think that the there's a genuine part of a lot of these parents or whoever they are that are commenting saying that I need to raise these boys the right way and really I was raised to teach kids the difference between right and wrong and not every adult is right and when adult, yes, I the video doesn't show every single thing that has happened to lead up to that point. Every reasonable person should know that. But for me, every single kid and parent on my team knows that the heart of what I'm doing is trying to raise these kids the right way. Like I say that in the opening of every parent meeting that I've ever had. Of like I'm trying to help these kids grow up. It's the heart of everything that I'm doing. So that's been the interesting part to me is that there are some people that do actually mean well that really do think that i'm like this asshole but they just don't know me so totally i mean uh, also i mean the people just see you argue with a referee yeah and they think i'm the devil yeah it's like listen part of it is you gotta you have to fight for your team it's your job to fight for your team not not in your teaching your players like i'm gonna fight for you you guys go play the game my job is to make sure that things are fair yep Right, and we get it. Like being a referee is a hard job, and all of the other things that go along 100%. with it. And people are human; they're going to make mistakes. But referees start need to start teach like treating us like human beings too. Like yeah, every referee that has treated me like I am less than and inferior to them, like sorry, you're going to get the the <laughs> rage of me. The more that I'm able to put myself in like who I actually am out there, the more people look at me and they're like, oh man, like if they hate me, no problem, like unfollow me. But, like, if they really like what I'm doing, I have so many. I never really thought that I would be that person of, like, a bunch of, like, young female coaches look at me and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's that's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. So th- that, to me, is a another reason for me to put myself out there and do that. And and I also, I also use it as a recruiting tool. Like, it's a huge recruiting tool for me. Like, kids follow me. And they see, and they either want to be a part of this or they don't. And so when I'm at tryouts and I'm recruiting kids for my team, people can literally follow me online and see what I am and see what I'm about. And they can decide, are you going to buy into this or not? And a lot of people do buy into it. Yeah. And so that is the easiest way for me to sell myself as this is what I bring to the table. Either you want to be a part of it or don't. Yeah. I mean, it's, it goes back to like the original strategy of what we talked about social media for Beta Bay and for personal brands as well. Is we're trying to show, we're trying to show people an inside look at what yeah. the club does, at what we do, at what the coaches do. Right? We had conversations specifically about miking up coaches so that they can hear what it's like. Yeah. So that it's not this like behind the curtain thing that you're like, no. I'm not sure if I want to be a part of it. It's like you know exactly what you're gonna get. Yeah. And if this is something you want to do, you know it, and you're going to come. And if you don't, then you're not the person for us. Yeah. And that is totally fine as well. And so it, it acts as this window into the culture, into the business, into the club, into the coach yeah. that helps create a better buy-in because yeah. the people want to be there. 
that's also the difference. Like uh, the mic'd ups are definitely a trend right now. Like people, everybody wants to mic up everybody. Um, there's a difference, I think, between like mic'd up with one person one time and just this consistent, like I forget that the mic is on me. And like, I just want footage of like, what is it that I do and what does my everyday life look like when I'm at these tournaments? Because I think it's actually really interesting for people to see. Next topic was our favorite NCAA assistant coaches. We'll have a head coaches topic later on. But just some shout outs to our favorite uh, favorite assistant favorite coaches. Favorite assistant in coaches in the country, NCAA division. Anything. Men's, women's, NAI, NCAA, Did your you think choice. About your women's? I didn't think about the women's side at all. Okay, let's think about the women's. I asked about the women's because I could not name as many men's assistants as sure. I wanted to going into this. Do you have a favorite assistant coach that comes to mind? Yeah, it in took. In women's? Me, no, in men's, for sure. Or it, just in general. It took that. me a while, and then you told me I couldn't pick Spencer because he's too happy. And he also was my he's assistant. Your assistant coach, so you 60s. cannot pick him, yes. <laughs> Spencer, I tried. I'm so sorry. But boss man. Uh, and then yeah, after further review, I decided on Milan, and I don't, I don't regret that for a second. Um, <laughs> the number of coaches that I have spoken with that have this like reverence for Milan is pretty alarming, and I'm not saying that they're bad coaches because they stole all of their stuff <laughs> from Milan, but I think they're geniuses because the shit that he's doing and the way that. They train volleyball in Europe and in Serbia is so strong that Milan has been able to be one of the best trainers in the men's collegiate game for the last decade or so. Um, and, you know, I'm also I'm super fortunate to coach with Alex Jones, who played at UH for a little bit. And, and a lot of the stuff that we do, I mean, the first 30, 40, 50 minutes is a lot of like Milan stuff. And it's just it's high ref. It's a ton of ball control. It's stuff where it's like you don't even need the net. Um, and you see the impact that all of that stuff brings, and and so for me, yeah, Milan is it's a no it's a no brainer. That guy's that guy's a real deal. Yes, I agree. That's a dork answer. Li- yeah, Deal with dr- it. very volley dork answer. But we're different people. All right, it's okay. Dork I can dork. I can like Milan. There Such are multiple college answer. programs Whatever, that literally run Milan drills, like. Not like just running his drills. They literally call them yeah. Milan drills. Yeah. Like we're gonna run the Milan drills to yeah. start. <laughs> Some freshmen's like Milan in Italy. Yeah, they're like it's <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, from Italy. Like no, it's from the Hawaii assistant coach. No, it's a Serbian version Milan. of Milan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Italy, but like colder. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he wants to stay in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. right. My favorite assistant coach that. I like to steal from, or I just like in general. To steal from? Yeah. Wait. And this comes from, like, how he approaches things, is Nick McCray. I Mr. Love boom? Hashtag boom. Hashtag LB grit. I love Nick McCray. Ugh. You know Rank what? number one. No, I like Nick. I just yeah. don't like the... <laughs> that was a very <laughs> visceral response <laughs> no, right no, there. No, no, no. I like Nick a lot. I just don't like the booms. You don't like and hashtag the, boom. I don't like the hashtags okay. and the things. Number one. That's okay. I, Nick, family man. Always posting pics about his kids, but he just brings this like positive go getting energy that you can tell is is pretty infectious inside Long Beach as well. And I think Long Beach has a really cool culture and he fits it well. And he's just a guy that wh- whether it's out recruiting, whether it's coaching, anytime you go up to him, he's always super genuine. He's always just Ask, you know, he's always asking a question about you. He's always trying to check in on how things are going from taking kids down there for recruiting trips and seeing how he, you know, handles a, handles a tour, handles a group. Like we took a group of 15 people down for like a beta bay recruiting tour back when that was still a thing that you could do. And he took like seven years ago. Yeah. yeah, Like a, like a decade ago. He took time with every parent, every player, and most of those kids were never going to play Division One volleyball, and he answered every question like they were the number one priority. And for me, that left a big impact of, like, this guy gets it, and he is going to succeed with what he does if this is how he approaches, you know, a, a group of kids that, you know, probably is not top recruits. There were some g- very good kids in that group, but for the most part, he handled every kid like they were the best. Our last item on the docket this today. This is an important one. This is this is a random one, but man, no, this is important. It is, this is just important for the sport. 
It's important for the culture. Yeah, it's important for the sport. Nominations for bench player of the year. Can you please define Be- bench player of the Why year? Why are you looking at me? Like this, this was, was my your, idea. Because this was your idea. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So bench yeah. player of the year means you got to be the culture guy. You got to be like the glue guy. Like mm-hmm. I'm going, I'm going to not question my role and not make this harder on everybody. I'm just going to make this team go. And I'm going to buy into whatever everybody like is trying to do here. All right. So bench player of the year is the guy that is making his team the best he possibly can while not necessarily being on the court. He's not a starter. Yeah, but you he definitely is, can't he, be on the court. But he is a massive part of the team. Oh, who's your bench player of the year? You have one? My, well, my <laughs> bench player of the year is a bit of a kid. So. <laughs> huh? My bench player of the year? You guys ready for this? Hold on. Brian oh. Thomas. I thought that's who your bench player of the year was going to be. No. I love the guy, but no. No. My bench player of the year is the right answer. I don't care what any of you guys say next. My answer is right. No, he's the defense player of the week. He's a starter right now. <laughs> he's actually always a culture player of the year. Yes, yeah. exactly. My bench player of the year is Neil Finnegan. Oh, I like that. And here's why. Neil Finnegan of CSUN, Cal State Northridge, we love Neil. is the consummate teammate, knowing from experience. The man started on 16 Foundry, Beta Bay, that's the 16 Fours team, for those who didn't know. So biased. It is biased. But here's the real kicker. It's not it's not that he's a great guy. It's not that he works his butt off. It's not that he's gotten so much better and went from fours to a ones team to college. Or is or is Irish. It's that Irish. he is a competitive Irish Let's go. jig dancer. Yes, 100 percent What more do you want in your bench player? Of the Find year? me another bench player who can, can you jig like him. Exactly. Come on. Monster block and Neil's just off in the corner doing some <laughs> flippity jig. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's the greatest bench player you could ask for. Flippity jig. Flippity jig. Jesus. <laughs> Hip hopping around on his toes. He's not in a Lucky Charms commercial. <laughs> what are you talking about? I <laughs> swear. Come on, man. Neil Finnegan is the only right answer. <laughs> Even Balboa Bay guys would say yes to this. Oh, Travis Turner goodness. completely will agree. Because he coached with them for a little bit. Exactly. Oh, man. my goodness. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> a made up expression jig. plus an Irish jig so I'm, yeah. uh, I'm in oh my goodness that's it Neil, Neil's the winner All and right. Neil I'm, I'm calling right now Neil may not be a starter this year he's gonna be a starter by the end of his senior year calling it love that everybody likes Neil find someone who doesn't like exactly upward on. trend he's been trending up since he was 16 he literally gave up competitive Irish dancing to play volleyball honestly good trade yeah Oh, well, maybe. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> if she wins this award, it'll all be worth it. <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys I messaged Winder when I was, like, 14? <laughs> yeah. Please no, continue. 15. 15? Can we talk about this more? We can cut this later. It's no, fine. keep going. We had gone down to Santa Barbara for a tournament. And Pep was playing Santa Barbara, right? Because, like, Dan Mullen, right? We were we were playing in the tournament, and we went to the match Friday night. And there was this one play where Winder had, like, run cross court, was, like, full Superman, and freaking launched one with his wrist. And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And I sent him a message on, like, Facebook. And I was like, how, do you, how did you do that? <laughs> and the only thing he gave me was, like, I don't even remember that play, but, like, I squeezed tennis balls all the time. <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. And... I tried to, it didn't help. But f- for him. Oh, great. that's really ha- nice he responded. Yeah, it was really cool of him to respond. I'm sure he was like 19. I was like, I don't fucking know who this kid is. But. Oh, How long funny. did you squeeze tennis balls for? Oh, only like a couple weeks. Like he just, <laughs> I was like, this isn't working. I'm getting worse. I'm not going D1. <laughs> this is stupid. No, but I mean, I'm sure it worked for him. Also, he's like 6'9", so that helps. That is the most ridiculous. I wanted to be I able to do that. it. I, I couldn't that. do it. That's so funny. I can I can absolutely see fifteen year old Chad hundred percent in his bedroom just squeezing tennis balls like this is it. I'm gonna go to the Olympics. This is what's gonna make it happen. 